uh, to the other big story that we're tracking today. And first, um, a quick update on India's COVID numbers. So we've been hovering around the 40,000 a day mark for quite some time now, at least a couple of months. This jumped about 12 percent to 47,000 uh, yesterday, um, which is the highest in two months. Um, a lot of it comes from Kerala with 32,000 fresh cases in the last 24 hours. And um, the number of deaths has also crossed 500. So the warnings have gone out in the health ministry briefing today that don't let your guard down during the festive season. But specifically, we need to speak about two new variants, MU variant and C.1.2 variant, which has caused some kind of an action. So, for example, people coming into Mumbai airport now have to take an RT-PCR test if they're coming and traveling internationally um, at there and then. So this had been suspended earlier. Um, so all of this is now leading to some concern. The MU, in fact, has been declared a variant of concern by the World Health Organization. So let's just understand what really is going on. What do we know about these variants? Dr. Chandrakant Lahiri and Dr. Shashank Joshi is joining us on the show today. Welcome to both of you and thank you so much for speaking with us. Uh, Dr. Chandrakant, let me begin by just asking you the simple basic question. Tell us about these two variants and is it something to be concerned about? So we know that uh, as, as long as virus is uh, circulating, there is a possibility of some mutations. So these two new variants which have been discussed in the media extensively and one of those muta uh, variant, mu, has been, uh, which is also biological name is B1.621. Uh, this has been designated as variant of interest. And the reason is that uh, mu was first identified in January 2021 in Colombia. And since then, it has been identified in around 39 plus countries. And it has been found that it has many of the mutations which have been reported through other existing variants of uh, concern, alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. Uh, what has been noticed that since it is there in large number of countries, and there is a, some possibility of that this uh, variant and some of the mutations this, in this variant can have a um, immune escape, which essentially means the antibody which are generated by either vaccines or natural infection might not be enough. But that's a kind of assumptions we do not know. And that's why initially, whenever there is a doubt that what can happen with a particular variant, it is designated as variant of interest. And then it is followed through for some more time. And then it is classified as variant of concern once it is proven that the characteristic which we are looking at is existing there. So that's about mu variant. The other one is C1.2, which is essentially the variant of a, a earlier uh, variant which was circulating in South Africa. This has also been identified in number of countries, but number of countries around seven. What There is a recent paper which uh, had been published by researchers in South Africa. They have identified that uh, this uh, C1.2 is showing a large number of mutations and the speed of mutation and this variant is relatively faster. Usually, this has been noticed that a uh, number of mutations in a, any variant of uh, COVID-19 virus or SARS-CoV-2 virus is around 24 mutations in a year. But this uh, uh, particular mutant from uh, South Africa is showing around 41 mutation in a year. So the rate of mutation is faster. And the scientists has, have concluded that as and when there is a rapid rate of mutation in the, any variant, it could be a cause of uh, worry. So this uh, is being tracked. This is there in seven countries and being discussed. But we need to remember that this other one, C1.2, has not been designated either as a variant of interest or variant of concern. This is simply a research paper which has come out, and that's what scientists are hypothesizing a few things. And that's why we are discussing about these aspects. So mu is variant of interest. Other one is not uh, classified okay. in any of the two. So the other one, the C.1.2, is a variant which uh, just mutates very, very quickly. So that's why there's an eye on it. Uh, mu is a vari variant of interest. What about the Delta Plus, uh, uh, Dr. Lahadia? Uh, we know that 300 cases of Delta Plus uh, have been logged uh, right now. Do we at this point have any information whether it's vaccine resistant? Does it escape the vaccine? Because that is the only question right now, isn't it? So, well, uh, I think now it is fairly widely concluded that Delta Plus is not very different from Delta variant. Essentially, Delta Plus is a colloquial name. It is a sublineage of Delta mm -hmm. itself. 
Uh, it was first identified in April, and since then, it's around more than four and a half months. And the number of uh, geno genomes identified with this variant is 300, which shows that it is not spreading at that speed. Also, the initial uh, uh, indication that some of the uh, ad mutation in this variant Delta Plus could also be over and above additional transmission rate than Delta, which is not true. So there is no additional concern about Delta Plus. We should, for the time being, assume that Delta Plus and Delta are similar. And the number of variants identified with this is really small. If uh, a variant is really concerning or likely to change or be behave differently, by now we would have seen more number of Delta Plus uh, cases, which is not there. So I would say that let's stop and let's assume for the time being that both are similar. Whatever are the characteristics of Delta are characteristics of Delta Plus, except for some monoclonal antibody resistance, which has been found in Delta Plus. But we know that the monoclonal combination antibody therapy is used in a very, very minimal number of patients. Hmm. Uh, Dr. Joshi, then why is this new notification coming on Mumbai airport? Are there concerns within policymakers about these mutations? There are three things. First is that we need to separate science and biology, as Dr. Lahiria said. From a scientific standpoint, C12 is a fast mutating virus. Only less than 100 cases have been seen in South Africa. Number of countries are only seven, and it has not traveled far. But if it does, the implications may be sinister. As far as mu is concerned, it's a variant of interest classified by WHO because 39 countries or 40 countries have it. We don't want it to spread and become a variant of concern. So obviously, we also had a lambda coming from Peru, and many such variants will keep on being described as the virus mutates. See, in the vaccinated world and non-vaccinated world, from both these worlds, there is going to be pressure on the virus ecology, and we will get more and more mutations. Some mutations will be sinister, some mutations will be less or innocent. Unfortunately, what is happening with the COVID virus is the earlier mutations appear to be less sinister and the newer mutations appear to be faster spreading and more sinister. Currently, we are only one concern, which is Delta and the diversity within Delta, whether it is Delta plus AY1 to AY13, that is the prime concern because it is faster spreading and it is as fast spreading as chickenpox virus. So that is the primary concern. I think the international passenger downloading here is primarily as a way of abundant precaution because when we know that now things are getting back to normal, if they are getting tested on the airport, I don't see any major challenge because we need to be cautious and careful and we don't have a very stringent policy in place. You know that Indians to go outside India, only four or five countries are open for us. And wherever we go, we get into a 14 day quarantine. And if at all the quarantine has to be released, for example, in UK, you have to do a test on three days, five days, seven days and 14 days. Hmm. But if you are double vaccinated, whenever an Indian is traveling all over the world, they are not only getting tested, but they are also getting quarantined. I think in Mumbai airport, all they have done is that they are testing them at site because many a times these COVID reports which come from outside, it is very difficult to ascertain the negativity of the reports. And some of these trains are faster spreading. So they might have the mm. formalities to take three to five days for the strain to be detected. But sometimes it can even take 24 hours for the strain to be detected in the fluids or the nasopharyngeal secretions or the oral secretions, which is why they have done it as a way of abundant precaution. And I don't see major challenges with that. We need to be cautious and careful. We are just about seeing the end of the second wave. No, no, so, so there is no problem. There is there is no problem. You're absolutely right, Dr. Joji. There's no problem at all with abundant caution. In fact, uh, just to add to that, a survey done by a local circle says 74% Indians who they surveyed wants government to suspend flights from countries with presence of C.1.2 SARS-CoV-2 uh, variant and wherever it has been reported. 65% want government of India to be cautious for the rest of 2021 given the risk of COVID variants and the third wave. So abundant caution is fine. My question is that are we 
not seeing enough of a drop in cases. Now, Dr. Joshi, if I ask you about the overall cases today, 47,000. Um, Kerala is seeing steady 32, 35,000 cases on a daily basis. Mumbai has seen a jump today of about 440 cases. The question is that if there is no new variant, if people are getting vaccinated at record rates, why are the number of cases not coming down? So I think uh, India overall, the numbers exception is Kerala. If you remove Kerala out, the numbers are pretty low. After Kerala, it is northeast, some degree of the other three South Indian states, which is Tamil Nadu, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh, maybe a little bit of Bengal and a little bit of Maharashtra. These are concerns. But rest of India, if you see the amount of test positivity rate, it is very low. It is below 0.5%. You can, if you see places like Delhi, it's almost non-existent. I mean, they have minuscule numbers, I would say. Yes, Mumbai has seen a rise in the last 10 days. Their doubling rate has gone up. And just before we spoke, I and Dr. Lahari were having a small conversation. Our test positivity rate from 0.5% has jumped up to 1.19%. But remember, we have to look at weekly patterns over a period of time. We have unlocked a lot. And still there is pressure to unlock more. Festive season is around the corner. So obviously, we need to be cautious and careful that, but we are not seeing a wave. We are only seeing a small spike and the TPR is still very much within the range. So I would not get totally panicky or worry, but with festive season around, I think we should be careful. The second thing is as far as India is concerned, Kerala is an outlier. They are doing their best, but the hospital system is not overwhelmed. The healthcare system is not overwhelmed. They have one of the lowest case fatality rate. Yes, they need urgent attention. There has to be something there. Probably where are we lacking in places where COVID is prevalent with high test positivity rate is prompt isolation is extremely important at suspicion. Unfortunately, we are not promptly isolating if we are suspecting COVID mm. and we are not going to contact tracing and also isolating them. If we do it at that, we'll nip it in the bud. And then very strong you know, tracking and containment. If we are able to do these simple two, three public health measures appropriately, we will be able to nip it in the bud. Yes, Kerala has been a little challenge, but I certainly feel that they will right. turn around. Hmm. All right. Let's let's see. You know, I think one thing we've learned in the last two years and uh, even the topmost experts uh, really shy away from making any predictions and claims as to how the virus will behave, how mutations will behave and whether there will be fresh waves or not. So it's fingers crossed and masks up for now. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Joshi and Dr. Laharia for joining us today.